Joe. Intermission video is over, and our next speaker is Skyler. Talking about how awesome his 3D printer is. And somebody get the lights. Great. Skyler, you're up. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Skyler. I'm from Phoenix, Arizona. I'm part of Heat Sink Labs, our local hacker space. And Love those guys. And I'm here to tell you about my about my love of 3D printers. Leonardo da Vinci was a prolific inventor, but one of the challenges he faced was going from a pencil sketch to a working prototype. That's why you never saw a flying machine in the 15th century. Technology advancements of the 19th century allowed Edison and Bell to bring their ideas to life. The first 3D printer was invented in 1984 by Charles Hall, and the, and the technology has continued to advance ever since. The 3D printer works by you take a plastic filament, you push it into a heated nozzle, you then melt it and extrude it out onto a build platform to create your object. This process is repeated many times to create your final object with multiple layers. Here's how you use a 3D printer. You take a 3D model, which is in an STL format, which is a triangle mesh. You turn it into G-code, which tells the printer how to move. You then print it, and you have your object. But the problem with most commercial 3D printers is they cost too much. Even the cheapest one would take me... with my current allowance to be able to afford. What's a young inventor like me to do? <laughs> Luckily, the open source community saved me with the RepRap, the Replicating Rapid Prototyper, a low-cost 3D printer that you can make with from parts at your local hardware store. But the problem with the RepRap is it isn't very reliable. These three guys wanted a more reliable 3D printer, so they created the MakerBot, a low-cost 3D printer that just works. A few key elements of the MakerBot are the extruder head, the control electronics, and the build platform. Here's how you use your MakerBot. Let's say you break your car's key fob because you you have your you're borrowing your friend's car key fob. Take it to the dealer because it is crap. But you realize, I have a 3D printer, so I can fix it. So you just trace it out, you design a 3D model, and then you print it, but what if it doesn't fit very well, or the case might fall apart? You can redesign a new version and print it again so you have a better design. And if you don't want to have to design something, you can go to Thingiverse, the universe of things! <laughs> where anyone can download a 3D model to print out on their 3D printer. In fact, my first print was a thing from Thingiverse, a whistle. Now, why a whistle? Well, it's easy to print, it's functional, <laughs> and when you're done, you have something that annoys your parents. <laughs> the great thing about 3D print, or printing is you can print in whatever color you want by changing out your filament, and you can print in whatever size you want by scaling your 3D model up or down. Some other things on Thingiverse are a 3D knot, a three Pettis's head, and a Darth Vader head. One of the amazing things on Thingiverse is the Gothic Cathedral, though, that pushes the limits of the MakerBot with its detail and intricacy, as well as its overhangs. And for all you makers out there who are wondering what useful stuff I, can I make, well, you can make a nut and a bowl, a ball bearing, or a comb to get a mate, and the most important thing, a bottle opener to crack up a cup, to crack open a couple cold ones. <laughs> and when you become really good at 3D printing, you can print your own MakerBot on a MakerBot. You just need to download all the 50 something files from Thingiverse, oh. and you can make your own MakerBot on a MakerBot. But you aren't limited to plastic. You can print in frosting with a frost shooter. 
Now, so now you can print your cake and eat it too. Yeah. <laughs> I encourage you to learn more and check out Heat Sink Labs at Fiesta Hall at Maker Fair and go see MakerBot in the Expo building at Maker Fair. Thank you.